How long can we burn our fossil fuels before they are gone forever? When the oil, gas and coal runs out, and it will run out, what will be our alternative? Humanity needs to find innovative ways to generate the power we need. Ways that can last forever. Meet Lucky. You've got to give us a rest, right? We've got to go and do some pressure now. A Sri Lankan-born entrepreneur running a book publishing business in London. This is the biggest business opportunity mankind has ever had. Passionate about making money. I'm the one who raises money. And passionate about her home country. It's again a Western perspective. She comes from a large, successful family in Sri Lanka, where it seems almost everybody is in some way connected to everybody else. This is how you cripple something from day one, in my view. A novice in the energy business, but inspired by publishing a book about global warming, it will change your life. <laughs> it changed mine. Her grand vision is to transform Sri Lanka into the world's first fossil fuel free economy. A big idea. I thought I'd like to make Sri Lanka the first fossil fuel free country in the world. This is Dr. Tawny Lania, an economist and a friend of Lucky's. When I hear overwhelming statements like that, I think to myself, OK, let's see if you can do it. Tawny is working as an investment advisor for a London-based fund, which might invest millions in her friend's green energy ideas. But she needs to check out Lucky's story. It all seems plausible on paper, but then it always does. There's something there that just doesn't smell right. Tawny needs to perform what's known in the business world as due diligence. Well, I'm sorry, as an investor, as, as, as an investor, that's who we invest in and this is who we invest in. We don't invest in you because they're the managers that need to be able to run this company. It was our fault because we didn't, we didn't, give, them time. We didn't give them enough time. Yeah, they were not geared for this. Due diligence is the tire-kicking part of making an investment decision. I think for any investment, you need to go look at, kick the tires of the company. With questions to answer, Lucky has laid on a grand tour of the country to show off her ideas and convince Tawny that Sri Lanka has got what it takes to embrace green, renewable energy and return a profit on what could be millions of pounds of investment. Located just off the southeast coast of India, Sri Lanka's terrorist history is well documented. The terrorist group, the Tamil Tigers, had a 30-year reign of terror over this island. Now, the war is over, and an uneasy peace exists. What the country needs now is more electrical power to redevelop. But Sri Lanka's beautiful and fertile countryside is not the sort of place to fill with toxic emissions from fossil fuel power plants, especially at a time when the world needs to reduce its carbon output. The government say they want to use clean energy and so have agreed to pay a regular fixed tariff to anyone who can generate power to its national grid using renewable resources. Against this backdrop, Lucky thinks she has spotted a business opportunity. We are going to make a transition from a fossil fuel based economy with all that entails. So the oil supply, the oil structures, all that the coal industry, all of that is going to have to switch to a cleaner form of energy. And in that lies the biggest business opportunity you can imagine for those who are prepared to take the opportunity with both hands. This is Para, a scientist and a green energy pioneer. His passion is inventing all kinds of renewable energy ideas. He's part of a small society of engineers who have dedicated themselves to this task. The society leader is the father of renewable energy in Sri Lanka, Dr. Ray Wijewardena. Dr. Ray owns a plantation where he develops his bioengineering concepts and has built working prototypes. Lucky wants to secure investment to commercialize these ideas as part of her plan to make Sri Lanka fossil fuel free. Tawny is here to investigate one of their concepts, a 10 megawatt power plant fueled by Glaricidia branches. This is a fast growing plant that grows so much and absorbs carbon so fast that if it is burned in a furnace to power a generator, the whole cycle is effectively carbon neutral. 
Now, fossil fuel is something that has been uh, converted to fossil fuels from organic matter millions of years ago. So what we are doing is we, when we burn fossil fuels, we are releasing something that are trapped for many, many years. And uh, what has been collected over a lo long period of time is being released in a very short period of time. Now in contrast, when we are talking about using uh, biofuels, particularly wood or any other biomaterial, we are uh, releasing, no doubt we are releasing carbon dioxide, but that is something that has been absorbed in the wood in the past year perhaps. And also we are looking at uh, resources that will grow again in that short period of time. Tawny's company Eco Capital is acting as an investment advisor for Meteor Asset Management, an investment company working towards solving the global energy crisis by investing in solutions that don't rely on fossil fuels and at the same time are sound investments. As well as making a profit for the investors, Meteor want to secure valuable carbon credits which can either be sold to enhance the return or be used to offset an investor's carbon footprint. Well, I think it's, it's, it's like a perfect storm. The war's over, they need to look at renewable energy. Renewable energy is on everyone's mind. The carbon markets is, are on everyone's mind. And I think it's really the perfect place to go to look at really strong projects that have strong community impact and dealing with an issue that Sri Lanka is dealing with. I mean, a huge proportion of their GDP goes straight to oil. Actually, a lot of that money can be used to help their citizens if they look at renewable energies within their own borders. That's how I see it. It's Tawny's job to find the appropriate projects, carry out the due diligence, and make a recommendation to the investment committee. The investment committee are a group of experts in energy and ethical investments. They will make a judgment based on Tawny's recommendation. Her adventure in Sri Lanka starts with that all-important first meeting with the management team that Lucky has assembled. The place for the first meeting of all the parties involved is the hotel lobby, but the team is late and Tawny is not someone to be kept waiting. Hey, Lucky. Uh, how are you? I'm all right, actually. Nice talk. Very nice talk. But I don't know where they are. I thought they would all be here by now. Maybe they don't know who we are. You don't see them, do you? Okay. Yeah, we're running a little bit late, about a half an hour. He's normally actually more punctual than anybody I've met. Famous last words. <laughs> well, I'm going to shoot the guy. I'm mean, just like, where the hell is he? So, anyway. Finally, they arrive. Hey, Hello, are you Cora? Uh, yes, right. Thank you very much for your help in organizing all of this. It was nice to meet you. Finally, I hear that you are the man uh, with all the power, getting the visas, etc. It's nice to meet you, I'm Tony. Thank you for your help. Yeah, you know, of course. It's a pleasure. It's all, all for our country. Exactly. And by the way, as I only learned yesterday, we are Sri Lankans, right? Yeah. So we have a Sinhalese and you have a Tamil, but we are Sri Lankans. So. I just wanted to get that across to you. Okay. All right. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm American and British. Yeah. <laughs> one body, in one body. Exactly. The team meet in the beach restaurant of the hotel and go through the business plan for the power plant. 